Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna first do the horizontal stabilizer assembly today. I've got the parts laid out on the table behind me. I'll show you how that's done. And uh, I also got a projector running to help with the drawings because it's uh, a little hard reading it sometimes on screen and makes it really nice to hold a part right up onto the projector, see what's going on. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, obviously we got the drawing on the screen. I also have the manual open as well. Both really work nicely. Now, uh, you can see on the manual itself, there's numbers here that correspond to items here, like horizontal stabilizer, rib, number seven. And what I've done is I've just laid them all out on the table. So I've got everything laid out, and I've got them laid up like the drawing, but we've got a lot of work to do here still. So obviously, uh, each one of these pieces there's plastic on them. They, they got to be cleaned up a little bit still. They got to be primed and all that because I'm going to do uh, priming at least on all these parts and uh, the mating surfaces, get all that stuff done. Uh, it's a little cold in Chicago still to do all that stuff. So uh, I'm most likely going to dimple and make sure all this stuff fits with Clicos and uh, kind of proceed from, from there. But as you can tell where we're going here, this build manual is pretty cool in that it tells me exactly what to dimple, where to dimple, what not to dimple, which is great. And uh, also what to rivet with what to rivet. So uh, this manual is gonna be pretty cool, pretty easy to follow. What I'm going to do as well is I'm going to sign each page once this thing is fully completed so that way I can know that I'm done with, uh, with each page as well. Let's take a look also at the hardware bags. Uh, some of you guys are probably curious what kind of hardware comes in here. So we got a lot of bags, right? We started counting these a little bit. No way I'm going to count that. But I'll count the little pieces, make sure we have all these. Make sure we have all the rib nuts and that kind of stuff. But you can tell, we have a lot. Now, uh, there are similarities, like 142 here. There's another 142 over here. And so I got all these bins. Uh, I'm just going to put the 142s together. And I think uh, there's a couple others in this mix as well. Uh, 243 comes to mind. There's 243, 243, and uh, one or two more common in here as well. 153s, I believe, also. So that's a lot of work to do, but a lot of work uh, to do, but uh, yeah, I'll get out the the dimpler. My my guess is I'll probably just dimple these with the plastic. Maybe the plastic on still? I don't know. We'll, we'll see what it does with, with one on the plastic on and one with plastic off. But, uh, yeah, we'll kind of experiment here as we go. Cool. We've got a lot of work to do. All right, y'all. One other person pointed this out as well uh, in his videos. But you notice as we go down the part lists, there's something interesting that happens, right? It's no longer referred to as a part in the drawing. It's referred to as the item number. So, for instance, item 10 here is the rib 05. Rib 05, of course, is this guy. Now, you notice as you start removing the plastic of these, the tag comes off, which is pretty cool. Um, but if you write the number on the part, you're fine as well. And that's what people have suggested to do, and that's what I'll end up doing here as well. So uh, I'm just going to write number 10 on these. You notice as well, these items numbers kind of disappear. They uh, they all refer to uh, sorry the part numbers. They all refer to them as item numbers going further. So again, here's number seven with the dimple instructions. Here's number six, but it is no longer identified by its part number, which is HS rib 004, it's item number seven. So while that's cool, 
uh, it does mean you either got to go back and look it up or you write the number on this thing. And then when you prime it, that number tends to shine through a little bit as well and you'll be able to see it. But the good part about this instruction manual is, I mean, these parts are pretty easy to tell the difference between, right? Like, look at the, look at the changes here, even on these, uh, these ribs, right? Pretty simple to see here too. And so you can pick it up real quick and be like, yep, that's that part. Yep, that's this part. So it is not too complicated to uh, identify each one. Same thing goes with the hole sizes on all of these parts, right? So makes it pretty easy to tell them apart and to uh, see what's going on that way too. At least on this stage of the game, uh, it's pretty straightforward. All right, let's talk a little bit about dimpling here. There's uh, really two choices in life. There's uh, they're right here, of course. One's a DRDT, when the other one's a pneumatic squeezer. Uh, let's take a look at both real quick and see what we got. Okay, when you're looking at uh, the DRDT, uh, you're looking at basic pull the lever and uh, this thing goes down, right? So pretty straightforward. These dies, one goes here, one goes up here. Same thing, another little hole, and uh, pop them in. Now, uh, you can tell they did come a little rusty from the factory. Uh, even though these things were closed up September 7th, uh, is now, of course, December, uh, I put a little WD-40 on them, and uh, I'll clean these up a little bit more um, before I start using them. They're still a little, little tight, uh, but they're not bad. They're not, they're not bad. So, uh, I've heard others, they're a little tighter, um, and that's all right. Okay, the other one is a hand squeezer. Now, this is a thing of beauty. Uh, this thing is going to work really well on the, uh, the ribs, anything that's an edge. This squeezer is just going to take care of business. It's pneumatic, super simple. Do not lubricate it. It's an air tool, right? So uh, it just works by pushing forward and then pushing down. So it's a safety and then down. Now, there's a ram here that comes out and it uh, meets this. So the dies basically go in and one on each side, right? Uh, one on each side, these dies will go. Cool. So I think for these ribs, super simple, right? To go boom to each one. Literally like seconds worth of work to go down the line on these. And uh, yeah, just a matter of charging the compressor and uh, connecting the hoses, making sure I use a uh, filter to get rid of the moisture in the lines. And, uh, yeah, we'll progress.